Good evening, math friends. Tonight's homework is lesson 2.2 video. We are going to be learning about comparison problems. I want to remind you that you are going to be working in your Go Math book in page 25. So go ahead and make sure you turn to page 25 in your Go Math book. At the top of page 25 where it says name, I want you to write down this essential question. How does a model help you solve a comparison problem? Go ahead and pause the video, write down this essential question at the top of page 25, and then we'll get started. All right, let's look at our first problem. It's on page 25 and we're looking at number two. We're going to underline parts of the word problem together. So make sure you're underlining with me. Let's go ahead and read the problem. At the zoo, there were three times as many monkeys as lions. Tom counted a total of 24 monkeys and lions. How many monkeys were there? So we know that this is a comparison problem because we are comparing monkeys and lions. So we need to draw a comparison model so that we can solve the problem. The model is going to look similar as the ones that we drew earlier in our lesson 2.1. So let's draw the model together. Now here is what your comparison model should look like. We have our monkeys and we have our lions. Now we know that there are three times as many monkeys as lions. So we have our three boxes that are representing that part of the word problem. So I need you to make sure that your model looks just like mine. Now going back to our problem, it says that there were a total of 24 monkeys and lions. So we are going to draw a bracket around the squares for monkeys and lions, and we're going to put the number 24 here. This means that if we were to add up all the numbers that are in this box, we would get 24. Now, remember our question is asking how many monkeys were there? Well, we have a problem. There are no numbers, there aren't any numbers in our boxes for monkeys or lions. So we need to write an equation to help us figure out what numbers go in these boxes. Well, we know that we have the number 24. So we're going to write a 24 equals well, since I don't know the numbers that are in the boxes, I'm going to represent it with a letter. I'm going to use the letter N for our unknown number. Now I'm going to look and see. I have these boxes. There are one, two, three, four N's and they all equal 24. So I can say that four times n equals 24. Now, if we look at that equation, all we need to do is figure out the missing number. Now let's think, four times what gives me 24? That's right, four times six gives me 24. That means that n equals six. Well, now that we know what n equals, we can replace all of our n's in our boxes with the number 6. Let's go ahead and do that. Now that we have our model completely filled out, we can answer our question. How many monkeys were there? Well, we know that there are 6 lions. Let's look at the monkeys section. We are wanting to find out the monkeys only. Well, I know that I have six three times. So three times six equals 18. So there are 18 monkeys. That is our final answer. 
Now let's drop down to number four. Number four reads, Sheila has five times as many markers as Dave. Together they have 18 markers. How many markers does Sheila have? Well, we know that this is a comparison problem because we are comparing Sheila and Dave's markers. So we're going to draw our model for a comparison problem. Make sure you draw yours with me. All right, boys and girls, make sure that your model looks like mine. We are comparing, comparing Sheila and Dave's markers. We know that Sheila has five times as many markers as Dave. So Sheila should have five boxes under her name, and Dave has one. Now, let's finish the rest of the problem. It says that together they have 18 markers, so we know that all of the boxes together will equal 18. Now, we need to find out Sheila's number. Now, in order to find out Sheila's number, we need to find the unknown number that goes in the boxes. Well, remember, if we don't know the number, then we represent it with the letter N. Let's go ahead and put the letter N in each box. Now, we can create an equation so that we can figure out the missing number. So remember, we have 18 equals, well, let's count how many boxes we have for the 18. We have one, two, three, four, five, and don't forget, six. So we have six times n. We have the n's six times. Now we can find our missing number. Six times something gives me 18. That's right. Six times three gives me 18. So n equals three. Now we can change all the n's to threes. Let's go ahead and do that. Now our model is complete. Now we can finally answer our question. How many markers does Sheila have? Boys and girls, I want you to see if you can try to figure out how many markers Sheila has. Write down your answer and then you can press play to check your answer with me. How many markers does Sheila have? Sheila has 15 markers. Give yourself a happy face because you did a great job. All right, let's jump down to number six. Sue scored a total of 35 points. Let's underline that. In two games, she scored six times as many points in the second game as the first game. How many more points did she score in the second game? So we need to draw a comparison model to help us solve this comparison problem. Now, I've started the model for you. We have the second game here and the first game. Boys and girls, I would like you to see if you can fill in the boxes for the model and the bracket on the side on your own. See if you can do that on your own and then we'll check our model when you're ready. Okay, here's what I have for my model. Check your model, and if you need to fix anything, go ahead and fix it now. We have six boxes because we have six times as many points in the second game as the first game. And the problem also read that we had a total of 35 points. So our 35 goes next to the bracket around all the squares. Now that we have our model filled in, we can go ahead and find out our equation to help us find our answer. So we know that we need to write the unknown number in the boxes, but we do not know what that is. So we're going to write an N in each box to represent that unknown number. Now we can write our equation. We have 
35 equals, now I know that I have all my ends for the 35. Let's count them. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ends. I have n seven times. So seven times n equals 35. Now we need to figure out what that missing number is. Seven times what gives me 35? That's right, seven times five. So we know that n equals five. Let's go ahead and replace all of our n's with the number five. Now that we have our model complete, we can answer our question. Remember, it says how many more points did she score in the second game? Well, that means that we're going to subtract our second game's number with our first game's number. So we need to figure out what the second game's points were. So we're going to draw our bracket for the second game. Now I know that I have five, one, two, three, four, five, six times. So five times six equals 30 points for the second game. Now let's look at the first game. We only have five points for the first game. So to figure out how many more points, we need to do a subtraction problem. We should have 30 minus five. Well, that gives me 25. So how many more points did they score in the second game than the first game? 25 more points. That is our final answer. Now, our homework questions for tonight. Here's what you're going to be doing on your own. You're going to work on page 26, numbers one through six. Numbers one and two are like the problems that we worked on today in the video. Remember, if you get stuck, rewind the video. Go back and watch how we did the problems together to help you solve it. Numbers three, four, five, and six are review problems. So make sure that you have your homework completed tomorrow in class and the notes that you took with us in the video. Now, one last thing, mathematicians, we are going to assess ourselves. After watching the video and doing your homework problems, I want you to tell us how you feel about the lesson. Do you feel like you're a novice, a level one? You're just starting to learn this and you don't really understand. Do you feel like you're an apprentice, level two? I'm starting to get it, but I still need some coaching. Do you feel like a level three practitioner? You can do it by yourself, but sometimes you might get stuck. Or a level four, an expert. You understand this lesson so well, you could teach it to someone. Now, you're going to write your level of how you feel at the bottom of page 25. Now, don't worry if you feel stuck. We are going to do more practice with this lesson tomorrow in class. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye.